Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mod R, and we are going to talk today about health, wellness, and you. Now, as you all are probably thinking of making New Year's resolutions for the new year, most of those resolutions are going to be about health. I'm sure I want to lose weight, I want to start exercising, um, and I want to eat healthier. So today I'm here to give you some tools that you can work with, and they might help you making better resolutions for the, for the new year. So let's begin by talking about health, wellness, and you. All right. So before we go into that, a quick about me. I have a master's in microbiology and biodiversity. I have a master's in public health in human nutrition and dietetics. I'm a registered dietitian, nutritionist, also a certified personal trainer with the American College of Sports Medicine, and a prospective doctor of clinical nutrition. I'm still in school for that. So let's start with the basics of health and wellness. And today I want to really introduce wellness. Okay, so obviously what we are going to do today is we're going to start looking at the wellness wheel. And as you see, all these different colors here, they represent different dimensions of wellness. Okay, so let's look, uh, let's start with intellectual wellness. So what intellectual wellness means is um, your intellectual growth, expanding knowledge and skills in your area of interest or anything that applies to you. The yellow one is emotional wellness, understanding, respecting and evaluating your feelings, your emotions, uh, appreciating and acknowledging feelings of others and managing your emotions in a constructive way, reacting, uh, in a controlled way if someone aggravates you, eliminating toxic relationships, especially the ones that have a very negative impact on you, and making sure that if you are overwhelmed, it is time to reach out for professional help. The green dimension here is the social aspect or the social dimension. This is about maintaining a healthy relationship with those around you, your family members, your friends, your co-workers, everybody. And also to, uh, to, to identify what kind of a relationship you have with a particular person, not trying to impose knowing and understanding where to say no, knowing and understanding what other people's boundaries are. All of that comes under social wellness. The next part is your occupational wellness. Now, this one is more pertaining towards how you are in, in your occupation, your area of work. So preparing for or participating 100% in your work contributing your skills and your talents, feeling personally responsible as well as rewarding and meaningful in your work, being driven, being goal-oriented, result-oriented, and identifying personal boundaries, like what are your stress factors or are you getting personal satisfaction in what you're doing and making informed financial decisions. All of this is part of occupational wellness. Next one is your spiritual wellness. Now, spiritual wellness is finding purpose and meaning in your life without the influence of your culture or your religion. This is completely individualistic, what you feel as a person, being able to define what is right and what is wrong, being, being able to identify with your own environment, environmental awareness. All of this is part of uh, spiritual wellness. And the last and not the least is physical wellness. Now, the physical wellness is determined mainly by your diet, your exercise, your sleep, and your stress, okay? And this, your physical wellness is going to maintain your physical health. It is one of the most important dimensions that will also help take care of the mental dimension of wellness, okay? Now, that being said, today we are more going to focus on, the, on this physical dimension of wellness. So, let's look at three components that we were discussing earlier, diet and nutrition, exercise and physical activity, sleep and stress management, okay? So breaking it down, let's first look at diet and nutrition. Now, when you go to a grocery store and you know, you're know you standing there in the line waiting for your turn, you see a lot of these headlines on those magazines, fat diets, what do celebrities do to trim that belly fat? Carbs, are they good or evil? supplements, creatinine, hypertrophy, protein shakes, diet pills, and so many more. And at the end of it, you know, the one place that everybody goes to get their nutrition and health advice is the internet, okay, which is full of some information is actually true and some is not, but we don't know that, right? So whom should you talk to about nutrition and lifestyle? Now, these days, a lot of people talk about nutrition, 
There are people called nutritionists. There are health coaches and other types of coaches, registered dietitians, celebrity nutritionists, personal trainers and other instructors, magazines and media, and actors and film stars and celebrities have also taken to talk about nutrition these days. So it is very important for you to, pro to choose your provider correctly because nutrition and fitness are both branches of science. You need to understand why you're doing or why is somebody recommending what they're recommending. It's, it's, there is science behind that, right? So you need, to, you need to make sure that all of this at the end of the day is going to affect your health either in a negative way or in a positive way. So make sure that you choose that provider correctly. Now, the first step to health is always, always this, that when it comes to your health, it is important to be a part of the solution rather than being the part of the problem. Because if you were to make the wrong choice and listen to the wrong kind of people, then you are going to be a part of the problem because then you're going to have maybe some negative effects on your health, right? And part of the solution is becoming, is to go to an appropriate provider, making sure that you're getting the right kind of advice when it comes to your health. Now, a nutritionist or a coach um, might not have a dietetic background. It could be someone who has a degree in an unrelated field, or they might not have a degree at all. They could be someone who went online and got a nutrition certificate, or they got a certificate through an unregulated program to peddle supplements or other products in the name of health. And they could be people who do not understand the science behind nutrition and what they're recommending. Also trainers are not allowed to, or not, not qualified to give nutrition advice. Every training certificate makes it very clear that they're not allowed to do that. All right. Now, when we talk about nutrition, I think all of us, we all eat every day. We know how to eat, right? And so if I were to ask you this question, in, in uh, comparing, comparing these two pictures, like strawberry and cheesecake, for instance, so which is the healthier choice? And you would obviously say strawberries. Let's go to the next picture, which shows us bar food. And then it shows us a nice healthy salad made at home with croutons made at home. And as you see, there is no um, any kind of dressing on the salad. So obviously you would say, most of you would say that the salad is a healthier choice and you're right, it is. And what I'm trying to say here, I'm trying to make a point here that you obviously know what the healthier choice is. And if as registered dietitian, I went to school to learn what is healthy and what is not, I would probably get my degree in maybe an hour or so, right? So that's not why I go to school. So what a registered dietitian, a registered dietitian RD or registered dietitian nutritionist RD, and these are analogous. And what they do, they are allied healthcare professionals. They have a master's degree in nutrition and regarded as experts of nutrition in the medical field. They have completed a clinical internship or rotations. They've passed a national registration exam. They have to do an annual continuing education to maintain their credentials. And they'd have to do additional coursework and certifications to specialize in specific fields. So when we talk about choosing our provider credentials, that RD or RD, and that's an actual credential. So are the credentials real? Is the registration certification still valid? These are the questions you have a right to ask as a customer, as a patient, okay? And also look for knowledge and experience. Where did that professional acquire their degree from? Is this a good university? You should know that. So whom to talk to about nutrition uh, and lifestyle? The answer obviously is registered dietitian RD or registered dietitian nutritionist, that is RDN. Now, why should you see an RD? because maybe you want help managing your diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, any other chronic diseases, or you're looking for chronic disease reversal, or you have digestive or gastrointestinal problems. You're pregnant or you're trying to get pregnant or you're a new mom and you have a lot of questions about maybe lactation or how to feed your child. You have food allergies or intolerances. You're experiencing disordered eating patterns. You need to gain weight or lose weight you're caring for an aging parent or patient, you want practical lifestyle advice, something sustainable. You want to improve your performance in sports. These are just a few of the reasons where registered dietitians can help you. Now, as you might have already heard of the USDA dietary guidelines, any meal that you have, now this is, this is one meal, one plate, half of that plate needs to be filled with fruits and vegetables, and the other half of the plate should be whole grains and protein. 
Now, we always prefer that you go for plant-based protein sources over animal-based protein sources, but that is more of a lifestyle change aspect, which I'm not going to cover today and not in this talk. We will definitely talk about it some other time. Drinking water is also very, very important. Now, these are very, very useful guidelines. It's just, it's one picture, but it says it all. Are you eating foods from all the food groups and not just restricting yourself to eating just one particular little food or food group? So that, is, that is very important diversity in eating, choosing the kind of foods that you're eating. Okay, so we are going to talk a little more about some of the other advice that you can follow. And maybe based on these things, you can make a New Year's resolution that is actually very effective for you. So manage your portion sizes, add a variety in your meals, Try to add more fruits and vegetables. Limit your junk food intake. Keep healthy snacks around. Limit sugary and caffeinated beverages. Make it convenient to eat right. Do not skip your meals. Indulge every once in a while. Drink enough water. And in order to make it really easy for you to build your own meals, we have designed this basic wellness program. If you go to our website, that is www.richhavodog.com and click the tab that says product, you'll see this link uh, to Amazon and you can, you can buy this program. This program is going to help you design a proper meal. And it also has two levels of exercise programs that are complementary to that meal that you design. Uh, we also have a photo guide in there so that you, you know that you're doing it right. You know, your form and posture is correct. Okay. So let's move on to exercise and physical activity. Now we have a cartoon here that I got on the internet. It says the doctor is telling this um, patient that no, it's not water. You seem to be retaining food. Now, we all know that we need to exercise. Sometimes we do exercise for the wrong reasons, though. Most of the time, people will say that I need to exercise because I want to lose weight. Now, exercise is a great tool in weight maintenance, but it is not exactly a tool for losing weight. We do need exercise, re resistance training and cardiovascular exercise for extended health benefits. That's the reason why we are exercising. Okay. So what does the CDC recommend? The CDC says that you need a hundred and uh, 50 minutes per week of moderate intensity aerobic activity plus resistance training at least two days a week. So let's talk about what moderate intensity aerobic activity means. Examples are slow jogging, swimming, riding a bicycle with minimal activity, and vigorous intensity would be dancing, jogging, running, swimming laps, riding on a hill. As long as you're working hard, you're breaking a sweat, and you're elevating your heart rate, you're getting enough exercise. Now let's talk about muscle strengthening. I found this other cartoon that says, the handle on your recliner does not count as an exercise machine. No. Now you have many options to strengthen and to tone your muscles. You can use your body weight bearing exercises such as yoga, or you can add resistance using bands or free weights or machines. Now, a lot of the time people always ask me, do I have to exercise? It's so boring. Well, the answer is yes, you do, because it will help you maintain your weight. Like I said, healthy weight maintenance is something exercise can help you with. But along with that, you will reduce the risk of metabolic syndrome, like dyslipidemia, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and even certain types of cancers. Also, exercise helps you reduce stress and improve your mental health, strengthen your muscles and bones, so eating right and regular exercise will add healthy years to your life, not just years to your life. Medicine is going to add years to your life, yes, but you need healthy years. You want to be able to move around and be healthy all the way until you're 100 years old, right? So eat right and exercise regularly. Now let's go to the last segment, which is stress and sleep. Stress is unavoidable, but there are some ways that we can manage it. Eating healthy meals, Exercising regularly, those are our top two. Get enough sleep. Prioritize your daily tasks. Don't overwhelm yourself. This is very important because most of the time people do end up really, you know, they, they have their whole day planned out, but then they do not prioritize and then they overwhelm themselves and then that just results to a lot more stress. Learn to say no, it's okay to say no and get professional help if it is getting beyond your capacity to handle it. Now, activities that may help are music, dancing, yoga, meditation. I'm going to sleep. 
you need at least eight hours of sleep each night and all the four stages of sleep of the sleep cycle should be attained for quality sleep. Sleep deprivation causes weight gain. It compromises your immune system and it affects your memory. Set a sleep wake schedule, a wide screen time while in bed, exercise regularly and eat well-balanced regular meals. So you see, they're all interconnected. Everything works together. All these four factors, you know, your sleep, your stress, eating well, a healthy, I mean, well-balanced and healthy meals and then exercising regularly. They are all so important. And once you get a full control on these four factors, it is going to be easier for you to, you know, be more healthy, manage those other aspects, the other dimensions of wellness that we were talking about earlier. Right, so let's summarize. Eat right, focus on food choices and portions, drink plenty of water, aim to attain a healthy weight. Don't try to look too skinny or anything like that. Your healthy weight, talk to your dietitian, they'll tell you what your healthy weight should be. Do not count your calories, do not engage in fat diets, exercise regularly in addition to your physical activity. Focus on maintaining muscle mass and cardiorespiratory fitness. Get eight hours of quality sleep every day and learn to tackle stress without overwhelming yourself. Now, when in doubt, always talk to a credentialed health professional. Keep it natural, keep it simple, live happy and strong and live long. So thank you so much for listening to me here today. For any more information that you need for our videos, always visit our website, www.richamodak.com. You can also reach out to us via the website and ask us questions or schedule appointments. And uh, follow us at The Rate Modern Wellness on Facebook and Instagram because we share a lot of health-related tips. We have nutrition tips, exercise tips. We have parenting tips. So there's a lot of stuff that we talk about. So definitely follow us. Another new announcement that I will be making very soon is in the new year, we are actually going to, we have a new book that is launching. Now, this is a book which is going to give you, it's full of all those secrets, all those tools that you need to uh, make healthier choices and understand, gives you the knowledge about why we are doing. Like I said, you need to know why you're doing what you're doing. So please um, stay tuned. If you follow us on Facebook and Instagram, I'm sure you will be one of the first book people to know that, okay, the book is launching on the so-and-so date. So definitely stay tuned for that. And thank you so much once again for watching. And I wish you all a very, very happy new year.